So this, hey, we're doing number 29. So this is, we're trying to find confidence percentage from a range. So on this one, the one I have has uh, upper and lower CI given. So I have an upper of on this one 246.9 and negative 38.1, which is weird because you can't have negative time for ads, but we're able to ignore that. And they give you a mean, which is 75 seconds. Uh, oh, wait. We construct confidently. Why do they tell you it's 90%? If they tell you it's 90%, oh, Z alpha. So we have to do a Z score. Uh, Z given 0.99. So what we need to do is we had to find the, okay, so we had to find the error. So the error, it would be 171 that way. Let's see, the error negative equals a different amount that way, which is very weird. Why is it different? Oh, I did the, oh, it is right. They did some weird math. Wait. Why are they giving us a Oh, I'm doing this and there's no point. So if you look at number 29, there's to me, there's no point in doing this. Because if they tell you it's a 0 0.01, it's 0 0.01 on one side, and 0 0.01 on the other side. So what, are you, what percentage of your conference interval? 98. So the important thing of this though, you know, so I don't need any of this stuff because this contains 75, it's not, uh, it's not greater than. So if these, if I have a bunch of times and the confidence interval here, here will contain my mean time, then it makes sense that since my mean time isn't in the confidence interval, the confidence interval is not significantly different. And it's pretty firmly in the middle of it. <sighs> Let's see what else we have. Sorry. Mm. That's P from that. <clears throat> So I'm looking at the rest of them to see if there's any we have not gone over. Wow, I did quite a bit of stuff in one go. Yes, last time, didn't I? Oh, beta. So uh, we start getting weird things when we hit 37. Let's see, where's beta? So this is the for hypothesis test that 
claims that the mean amount of sleep in adults is less than seven hours. Technology output shows a hypothesis test has a power of point four five seven four. Oh, I don't even need this. Uh, of supporting the claim that the mu is less than seven hours of sleep when the po actual population mean is six hours of sleep. So, what the power is. <clears throat> power is one of those weird things where it's your, it's kind of your friend when it comes to statistics. And it's really kind of easy to see. It's essentially how much I actually trust what's going on. It, so it's your um, way of determining if my test has a good chance of succeeding or am I like, in this case, flipping a coin. Usually you want a power to be pretty high so that you, if you had detect any differences, they're actually true. And if the power isn't very high, even if you detect differences, they may not be true. That's what power is. Um, so when that 0.4574 is high, there's a very good chance of doing it. So really quick on this, it sounds very weird. Mm, so rename. An increase in size. Really? Increase. Super quick. So, power is actually alpha. So alpha equals, in this case, 0.4574. So beta is um, essentially one minus your alpha. Really easy to find out. Um, and this has to do with, oh, type one and type two errors. Let me get it up. Because there's a specific thing on this. Uh, wait, I hate textbooks for this. Please be a sample for this. So this has to do with something called a type one and type two error. Uh, so a type one error is alpha, just what it is. And I'm gonna do um, a two-way table to do this. So reject, fail to reject, uh, correct. So a type one error is when you reject your hypothesis when it's true. So this is what, this is correct here. So when you reject your hypothesis and that is technically false, that's what you want. When you fail to reject and it's true, that's correct, that's what we want. The null hypothesis is correct. When we fail to reject, and we should reject, is a type two. So type one. Reject when we shouldn't. And type two is don't reject when we should. This is alpha, and this is beta. And the stronger our alpha gets, the weaker our beta gets, and vice versa. Ideally, 
we would rather reject something when we shouldn't because we want to be sure than to just have something in the middle. And this is how we get those weird 0 0.05 numbers that you have everything. Because you want a really low chance of rejecting something when you shouldn't. Okay, so that was this weird question. And this is chi squared test statistic, chi squared tests. Wow. Literally, the rest of the questions are sometimes covered. So, what 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 do you guys need help with? How's you guys' project doing? Projects do in eleven days. Is it eleven days? Ten days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven days. So, uh, yeah. How did part two go? Good. Just have a question about Okay. So this is part two, that is. I don't know why that turns off. So topic five. So I was asking, like, you made a comment on how the prevalence of the disease can be, they're going to affect whether the test can be trusted. Mm -hmm. And for part B, it says the probability of having the disease given that you test positive. Uh, it's good. And it's good. That's uh, it's good because well, that's, it's not good for you. Guys. But it's good to know, yes. And the probability was point three, which is really um, terrible. Yeah, it's relatively low. That's not low, that's terrible. If I have a if I had a test that had thirty percent accuracy, I wouldn't use that test. Oh yeah. Mine was like forty four percent. And so I could say it's terrible. Oh yeah. Then it's like the probability of having the disease given that you test negative is also extremely low. That's good. Wait, no, that's bad. Having the disease given test negative? So, uh, that's, so you're a two-way contingency table now, right? So let's say, so you have, it's so, doo -doo -doo -doo. so this is number two, you're testing diseases. So you have uh, positive, negative, have, don't, right? I'm gonna have, make up some numbers. I don't know. I don't know how you got them. I'm just making stuff up. Twelve. Don't negative. Let's do five eight hundred ninety-two. So you should have for this essentially this, right? We have all the totals for each one. So this should be the first thing you do, right? Is just to get all your numbers. So the first one was Okay, so what do you have? So do, 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 do. Oh, so, oh, hey, uh, the only useful information that gives us is that we have a false positive rate of finding the disease and the positive rate of finding the disease. Yeah. So, that's what we're looking for. False positive rate of 6%. Okay. That's what we're looking for. 6%. Where is this at? 
if you will actually see the book. I'm, why do I have like, but why do I not see this thing? Is it, oh, never mind. Because it's over here and not that. So we are told the blood test. That means the test will yield an accurate positive result of nine percent of the cases. So that is actually this is nine percent. Oh, you have more information than you think. 9% is reliable, which means you test will yield an accurate positive result of 9%, which means your true positive, half and half positive is 0 0.09, right? Gestational diabetes affects 1% of the population. So this is, um, 1% of the population. our age group and our tests have a false positive rate of 4%. Right there. So to do to do. We told that the blood test is 9% reliable. Plus 9 X. That's like the X is the last digit of your Oh, nine, okay, so 94%, let's say 94%, 92%, 94. Okay, that would be easy, actually. Nine pound, oh, that's your student number. And it's just, point zero five. That, okay, that's really weird, because if you have a high number, Well, not, oh no, it's 94, 95 percent. So, like, if the last merger statement would be this four, then 94 right back. And, nine, and five percent that don't. But then, don't be a false positive. False positive is actually x plus four, which would be. Huh? I see plus one. Oh, wait. So uh, I see X plus four, so that'd be eight, yeah. See, that doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> it's kind of like point eight there, whatever. How do, you, how do they expect you to get false positive? Oh. This is a weird question. And I'm having all these random thing things don't really help. Because you're supposed to be able to find this, because you should have this, that gives you that. Oh, wait, so it does do 94%. Oh, this is. Point 0.1, this is point 0.9, which means this is point 0.94 times point 0.1. So you have nine point, that means you have more people who are test positive, you have a high rate, but this is the rate that tests into that group, which is different. So this, so this would be point 0.9, so to get this, you would do 
uh, 0 0.08 times 0 0.9. And this right here would be this minus this to get that 1.1.1. And then this would be 1 minus that minus that minus that. And then I'm going to, so that's how that worked. Is that what you did? Kind of, yeah, kind of. To get the numbers. Because this, like I said, you have 1% of the population or whatever it was. I guess this was, that was 5%. I guess it'd be 5. There we go. 7. So if, you, if we're using that number four, that's what we get for our numbers. Then to find, so B is what we're having it. Probability of a get, having disease giving you test positive is this number divided by that number. So minus 39%. So, the, and the reason this happens, and this is an issue when you deal with like diseases and, and there's an issue like when COVID goes almost to nothing is the false positives will skyrocket because there's just more error in them and more people will get tested and won't have it so there'd be more people even though just because it's a larger group doesn't mean the test isn't any worse it's just you know more people don't have it so more people will fall into that category it's like if i play the lottery and i bet you know over and over and over on the same four numbers. Well, of course I'm gonna hit those numbers more than the higher numbers because I keep on betting them. So yeah, it is that way and that's why. So if 100,000 people take the blood test, how many people would you expect to test negative besides actually having just additional diabetes? Just that times 100,000. Uh, probably have, having a disease given that you've tested negative. Maybe that, that, oh, 0.06% or 6%. I mean, once you get it, if you remember base theorem, this one goes really quick. Um, what you observe in the above combinations? Did you get this? Well, I, I kind of gave you a talking point there, right? That's I talked about that. That's important to me. You're not doing I mean, this test is highly accurate. It really is. The issue is if you have a low population who have the disease, it doesn't matter how accurate it is. You'll have more people in the other one because you have more people taking the test. So the, the, that's why, for instance, they do two of these. Because if you have two of these, and you take it twice, it's down to 16%. If you do it three times, down to 6%. If you ever wonder, for instance, whenever uh, Trump got COVID, they had to give him another test. That's why. Because even if you have a point a 5%, which is, I think, what COVID is, is like 5 at the worst. Take it twice and you're at 0 0.0025. That's why they always confirm those tests. 
because it's just math and they want to be sure. So Bayes madness. We had gone over this and I have my caps off on. So, I mean, it's been a while, so understandable, and it is kind of confusing, not going to lie, uh, to read that. Uh, so, but once you got it, pretty much goes right downhill. Um, anybody else have any questions? That kind of goes over that question, that part real, pretty decently, right? And once again, the interpretation, you can, and, and once you get that written, if you want to bug me about it a little bit more in depth, that's okay. Any questions over there? Does that help you with that, even if you haven't started? Yeah. Okay. I think it's more Okay. Well, that's a third of it, I think. So, and it's all like it's numbers, and that your numbers are going to change because your student ID, unless your ends in a four, and then in which case, hey, look, seal it. <laughs> Uh, anybody else? Anybody online? What do we have? Today's my lowest energy day because move me. And that too, and my other job is like spring break, so whatever. No, actually, technically, you get a week, it's just everyone's off, and you're all probably not going to be here because it's at the end of the semester. But I get paid, so whatever. Okay. Is that it? I mean, I, I did see that I went over a lot of this stuff last time. Um, I assume probably next week I will be hounded for problem three and whatever's still having issues on the homework. I may jump ahead and do it the chai squared if I can get a hold of some M and M's. Uh, if so, I'll make an announcement on LoudCloud. If you want to go do it along, grab some M and M's, bring them to class, and then eat them. Because I just like doing that, and even if we don't have to do chai squared contingency tables, I just want to eat M and M's in class for for math. We gotta count them first, and then you can eat them. Because I mean, there's I think probably in section six you actually do like six and seven you start doing chi squared contingency tables, observed expected. We'll start doing means testing. We'll start doing like two samples, two sample proportions, stuff like that. So. Those are more involved and start getting to more things that you would actually do in life. So instead of just running basic tests against stuff that you have, you start getting to pain. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? Did I say we run away screaming?